Okay, so this is it. We have a we have the body and the soul. The body is physical, the soul is spiritual. The soul is like the essence, the inner essence of what the thing is, the innermost essence. It's called panemius. What would this look like? Just erase? No, open the thing. Okay. So I reversed the by so the body is an, ex an external hello Michal. The body is like outside, the soul is what's inside, right? The soul is the essence of everything. It's inner, it's called in Hebrew panemius, and the soul has powers, which compared to what you do, what you what you say, what you think, they're the soul of your soul powers. But your soul powers are then, soul powers are then like the soul of the clothes that your soul wears. The garments of the soul, here's Toam, Garments of the soul, we learned, are the three garments, which is action, what you do, what you say, what you think, and feel. You think in your brain, that's Kabad, and you feel in your heart. Those are called middos. Middos, the word middo means a measure. Break that down, Let's remember it. The word middo means it's used everywhere, everywhere. A person is really having good middos. The middos are the measure of the person. That's your character. Good middos means <clears throat> that the feelings in your heart are good positive feelings. That's called good middas. Bad middas, person has a sharp temper, selfish. These are called bad middas. Cruel, bad middas. Haughty, arrogant. These are described in the Kanya as the manifestations of the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah works through the four elements, we remember. Fire, water, air, earth. These qualities generate the character traits generated by these four qualities are called bad middas. And the same four qualities work through the godly soul, and the things that they generate are called good middas. And the middas, that's who you are. You are what you do. You are what you say, you are what you think. These are an expression of your middas. Middas, word middha means, what does it mean? What's the word middha mean? Danny has, what does the word middha mean? Close. It means a measure. It's the measure of your character. A middha is a measure. What's your size? Go to the store, you want to buy a dress. What's your size? What's your middha? Seven. Five. You don't buy a dress that's a zero. Come on. Yeah, I'm serious. You're serious? <laughs> the zero, a zero is, is what you go in and when you take a bath, you wear a zero. Well, I told you, I don't know if I know. Nicole, say Amen. Amen. Okay. It's all right. Okay, it's all right. So this is what we're discussing. Just a quick review. <clears throat> Everything has a body and has a soul. The soul is spiritual. The body is physical. But your soul also has a soul. So on that level, 
what we call soul number one is the body and the higher level soul is is the soul and higher level soul number two also has a body and a soul so soul number two becomes the body for soul number three and it keeps going like that similarly <clears throat> are you waving at me with your cheese or whatever it is you got <laughs> I got distracted. So we're going to continue. Yeah, so we have to understand the difference between the essence of the soul, the rock bottom essence of what it is, the rock bottom essence of the soul, <clears throat> of the soul 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 is God. And he manifests in himself these powers, which are three and seven, intellect and midas. Intellect is Chabad, Chachma bin Adas, and the midas, come in. We open students, we welcome students here with open arms, but not physically, just spiritually. Hi. You remember me and Miriam? Miriam, I knew it. Yes. <laughs> Even with your mask on, I knew. Miriam Z. Yes. From Mexico. From Mexico, yes. From yes. yes. oh, yes. <laughs> Okay, Miriam, take your seat. Welcome back. We missed you. Uh, I missed you. Uh -huh. Okay. Sara Bela. Danny Hess and Nicole is with us. Yeah, in person. In person, okay. <clears throat> Again, the same thing. The inner essence of the person is the source of here, so over here. Yeah. The inner essence of the person is the source of the soul powers. The soul powers are the source of the garments that he wears, spiritual garments. Okay. The bainani, what's the difference between a bainani and a tzaddik? <clears throat> this is the bainani side. The bainani can control His powers. The tzaddik, the divinity cannot control the essence. So the, in the divinity's life, the divinity controls what he does, controls what he says, controls what he thinks. But the Yetzirah keeps bothering him like a fly, keeps coming back. Where in the tzaddik, the tzaddik takes the Yetzirah, and makes out of it dust and ashes, destroys it, destroys the Yitzhahara. And we learn in chapter 10, <clears throat> because of his tremendous love, Esther Bela, because of his tremendous love for Hashem, his overwhelming love for Hashem, that is like water and it totally floods the left side of the heart and floods the Yitzhahara and transforms the Yitzhahara into a Yitzhahara. We learned that in chapter 10, right? Right? This tremendous love, this overwhelming love. Okay. So the tzaddik controls completely the essence. And there's no more Yetzahara. Yetzahara is out. Whereas in the Benini, the Yetzahara is still in. Got it? So the Benini 
can control the powers of the soul, what you think, what you do, what you say, your character. The Benjamin can control this, but he can't control what you think. Because thoughts rise up on their own from the heart of the Benjamin. And then he has that's so in the realm of thought, in the realm of thought, that's the arena of battle. That's where the war is taking place. The real war is not in the Middle East. The real war is right there between the right side of your heart and the left side of your heart. And that's where it all comes from. So when you conquer your Yetzirah and you resist some. Like somebody is very obnoxious, and you, you see it day after day after day after day, and you can't take it. And next time it happens, you turn on that person and you give them a what they call a good piece of your mind. It's really not a good piece of your mind, it's a misnomer, it's a bad piece of your mind. I used to go to a, a, a quick copy store in the days before desktop publishing. So you make a poster and you take it to the desktop or to the, the quick copy store. They would put it together for you. Give them like picture and text. They would type it up and, and paste it down and they would print your poster for you. And then you'd you spend hours putting it up everywhere. That was so this quick copy store had a sign on the on the desk where you gave in your materials and said, speak when you're angry. Mm. You make the best speech you ever lived to regret. You're going to be sorry. You're going to be very sorry. Because it's all Yetzirah. When you're angry, that's idol worship. That's Yetzirah. Anger is idol worship. If you get angry, girls, write this down in your brain. That you get angry, the red light has to go on. No danger. Do, do not proceed in this direction. Go take a walk, do 25 push-ups, swim 25 laps, get your, your stretches out, stretch, stretch, do something, but don't open your mouth in anger. Don't. Get rid of it. That's that's Yates. That's Yates of Horror. He's going, ha, I got you now. Don't let him do it. All right. That's what we're learning. That's what we're up to. That the Bainani cannot control the essence of the soul. He can only control the garments. I, we just said he can't control his thoughts. That's true. He can't control his thoughts. He can't help thinking. But he can control dwelling <laughs> on a thought. I can't control getting angry, but I can control expressing. And that's the, that is the real test of character of the family. Yesterday was the bar mitzvah of my grandchildren, twins. I said to them, thank you. I said to them, you know, it's wonderful now. You said your minor beautifully, but now the war begins. And the first test of whether you're a man or, you know, you, you conduct the dominion. You said you're mimer and you danced with your friends and you had a wonderful time. The real test of what you achieved is tomorrow morning when you'll be in the minion. Gonna be there tomorrow morning? Mm -hmm. Poor boys, they're exhausted. <laughs> That's life. That's what it's all about. Little things like that. I told them. After they had done their first chakras, I said to them, a father is supposed to speak to his son on the day of his bar mitzvah. You are assuming tremendous responsibility now in the, in the, for the Jewish people. Everything is on your shoulders. What, what you do, if it's right, it brings salvation, Salvation, life, life saving energy to the whole Jewish people. <coughs> We're in with Yeshua. 
And if you don't do the right thing, it brings the opposite, heaven forbid. So it's on your shoulders. But you don't, you know what it means? It means little things, little things. You see a video of the Rebbe at a Ferbrengen. At the end of the Ferbrengen, they sing, they clap, everybody's excited. What does the Rebbe do? You've all seen it. I'm going to remind you. Everybody listening? The Rebbe takes a sitter. He opens the sitter. He doesn't look around. And he looks in the words and he says the blessing in the sitter. Easy, right? No, wrong. It's not easy. It's very hard. Because it's easy when you don't know the, the, the blessing by heart. But once you know it by heart, it's so easy just to say it. And then you can't remember if you said it or you didn't say it. Does that happen to you, Miriam Zeal? Yes. So I said, that's going to be the test. Are you really a master of mitzvahs? Bar mitzvah means a master. We say in modern American, a champion, a mitzvah champ. Are you really a champ or are you a chump? If you say the bracha properly, you're a champ. You forget, you don't know if you said it, you didn't say it, you're a chump. So the, the voice, he said, okay, it starts now, after the, the Kiddush. So they all, they, they open the sitter and they said the bracha inside. But that's yesterday, and then today is another ball game. You're, you know, uh, 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 an athlete is only as good as his last race. A fighter is only as good as his last bout. A writer is only as good as his last novel or his last movie. Be a great writer, the next one, get bad reviews. Oh boy, terrible, the worst thing. Okay, now let's, so this is what we have, the basic thing we have to understand is that Sadiq destroys the Sahara and makes it against your time. Transforms, takes the fire, the element of fire in his soul, instead of being anger and arrogance, it becomes warmth. A geschmack. I love to do mitzvahs. I love to learn. I love to help other people. Uh, same same, same in it, but it's being used in a positive way. Okay, chapter 12. This is, this is a crucial turning point in the chapter. We're in the 180s somewhere. Here we go. Yeah. Even though the Yetzer, the, the, the Benini has so, is so inspiration, is Sarah in a new place. Whoa. Welcome. I almost didn't recognize you behind some Sarah. I almost didn't recognize you behind some camouflage. She didn't hear that. All right. <clears throat> The S, here it is, page 185. You see what it says there in the, in the second set of lines there on 185. The essence and core of the godly soul does not dominate the essence and core of the animal soul. Got it? That's the Bainani, whereas in the Tzadik, it does. The essence and core of the godly soul totally dominates. And he's going to explain, we, we might not get there because we're running out of days. That's how on the first page of the Tanya, Rabba, who was a great, great tzaddik, like our Rebbe. He was like the Moshe Rabbeinu of his time. And he said he's a Benini. So his colleague, Abaya, went crazy. He said, yeah, 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 yeah you can't. If you're a Benini, we're all dead. We're all dead people. How could he think, the question that Alter Rebbe asks right away, how could Rabbah think he was a Benini? And the answer he gives is that he felt that he was a Benini struggling with his Yetzirah the whole time. And since he was struggling the whole time, so the Yetzirah never really affected him. But if he would stop learning Torah for a second, Yetzirah would come charging back like he just learned. And, and, and uh, he might even succumb to it and he'd be, he'd be heading for me to Russia. But he's not excited because he felt, if I stop learning, then uh, 
Right now, I like it sideways. I like it sideways. Because I'm totally in, I'm concentrated on learning Torah and nothing else. My, my his mouth never stopped learning Torah. So that's the crucial difference. The essence and core of the godly soul <clears throat> in a tzaddik dominates the essence and core of the animal soul. And in the Vedic, it does not dominate the essence and core of the animal soul. Proceeding, page 185, that after prayer, when he's praying, then the godly soul is dominant. After prayer, the animal soul, like I just said, comes charging back with all his bag of temptations to tempt you to do every single thing. You know, like my mother, Aleya Sholem, she was so sweet. She'd go out to a party and she'd come back and she said, oh, I'm so upset with myself. I said, why? She says, because of that Viennese table, I never should have had it. <laughs> so, that's what they say, that the, the, uh, a wicked person is full of regrets. They're always upset with themselves because they give in to the Yetzirah and they do things that they don't really want to do. Their godly soul doesn't want to do, but they, you know, temptation. The Yetzirah comes, he tempts you and you give in. You join into a conversation, you want to over, you hear some people talking some juicy, juicy, juicy uh, uh, gossip. You can't help listening, but no, that's what the Yetzirah wants you to do. Shut your ears. See, that's why you have earlobes. Esther Bela, they, they says, that's why you have earlobes. Not to hear, not to hear anything that you're not supposed to hear. Just go like that. <clears throat> so after prayer, the lights go down, <laughs> the love of God that was burning in his heart dies down and returns Page 186, his desire for all kinds of physical pleasures, like on the Viennese table and others and other such things. Like a day at the beach that is not segregated. As though, as though he never prayed. But if that's the case, that the Yetzirah is alive and well and kicking in the life of the Benini, why isn't he called a Russia? Why isn't he a wicked person? His Yetzirah is so strong, very strong. Person came to, I think the Rebbe Tzemach Tzedek, and he said, Rebbe, I'm learning 25 years for Sidus, and I, my Yetzirah feels stronger than ever. He says, well, 25 years of good, three good meals a day and sleeping in a nice warm bed, comfortable bed, didn't exactly help you get rid of your gates of hunger. You learned, but you didn't internalize what you were learning. As though he had never prayed at all, all those feelings of love that he had, they died down. And in chapter three, we learned. Chapter three goes back to the, the beginning. We learned this all in the beginning. That's how a good book is written. Everything's in the beginning, and then comes explanations and then more details. It said the quality of das. What does das do? The back of your head. What's that called? The cranium, the back. Into the all the good ideas. Says the Alter Rebbe in chapter three. They're just imaginings. You imagine how good it would be, how lovely it would be to behave so like this. But when push came to shove, when you were tempted to do something right then and there, you did it. You're only human. It comes out there but now in chapter 12, he says, so why isn't this person in Russia if he does it? He does it, he does the wrong thing. He says the wrong thing. You listen to the Lush and Hara. You waste the time. You watch the movie, not even a, a permitted movie, an X-rated movie. <laughs> it was so interesting. Uh, but, no, the Yates type didn't want, want to do it. So does that make you a Russia? Yeah, it does. So why is the Benini not a Russia? Because he doesn't do it. He fights the fight and he doesn't do it. 
That's what he says here, page 186. Even though he's craving for something that's totally not permitted to him, he's, he wants to just get up and go. He's late. No, the ancient type says, open the siddur. At the end of every forbringen, the Rebbe opens the siddur and looks inside, and he says the bracha that he knows by heart. The Rebbe knows the whole davening on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur by heart. But he davens in a siddur. So that's what we have to do. And you make yourself do it. He says it doesn't even enter in the mind of the Benini that he won't do it, heaven forbid. The thoughts of sin, he says. <coughs> so what's he left with? He doesn't do something bad. What's he left with? He's left with these tempting thoughts that are constantly assailing his mind day by day, hour by hour, even minute by minute. You're not free of it. Your mind is always running like a river. You ever sit by a river, you watch the water go, goes and goes and goes. How come it, 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 the water turns white as it passes over the same rock over and over? That's your mind. It's constantly running. So if you're not thinking good things with your mind, you're going to think something else. You can't stop it. It's like the river. You can't stop it. So this is the Bainan. <clears throat> The Benin is, is not allowing himself to think bad thoughts, but they keep on coming. And that's what the sages say at the bottom of page 186. There are three sins that nobody is ever free from them. What are they? Thinking thoughts, thinking bad thoughts about doing bad things. Keep your, to keep your das working, you stay focused on the words. And you do that, you know how you do that? It takes a lot of time. Think of the translation. Slow down and think of the translation. Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Elokeinu, Hashem, Echad. Hear, O Israel, Hashem is our God, Hashem is one. Baruch, Shem, Kavet, Mahusei, Leib, Mahuet. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Take the time to say it in English. Think it in English. That's how you fight off the distractions. If you don't do that, you'd be saying Shema and thinking about Bloomingdale's. Your mouth keeps working, especially, you know, when I was learning how to dub it, just like you girls, I had to learn how to dub it. It used to take me hours, hours. And I looked forward to the day when I would be fluent and I could daven more quickly and I would understand the words and I could think about what I was saying when I was daven. Guess what? I learned the words and I became sort of fluent. Although compared to the boys in 770, <coughs> so contest, they fly. Takes me twice as long as any any normal yeshiva boy who's been through the system, or maybe even a lot more. But I became fluent, sort of fluent, but it didn't help. On the contrary, it became even harder because now when you know something by heart, it just comes out automatically, and your mind is free to think about everything else <laughs> under the sun. I warned. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, so there are three sins that says the sages say one is being plagued by bad thoughts, and the second is losing your concentration. The das doesn't work. And we learn in chapter three again. What's what did I teach you just now? If the das isn't working, all your good thoughts are what's the word? Starts with an F. Fantasies. Fantasies, I, imaginings, just imagining what it's like to be a good Jewish girl. Okay, page 187. So I'm going to get depressed. I'm going to be upset because it's, it's hopeless. Am I? I can't. I'll never make it. I'll never be a Benini. I'll never be able to control myself like it says in the Tanya. Okay, so the Altarib comes to the rescue and he says, 
The fact that you did have good thoughts, if you learned some Hasidus before Dominic, you made an impression. The lights went dim, but they're still on. You know, like you have two, two light, two or three light switches in the room. The room's all lit up, and you turn off one switch. It's not so bright. You have two switches, so it's even less bright, but it's still light. There's still an impression left in your brain from the love that you had. And that's called not the burning love. It's not the, the, the tremendous love. It's not the overwhelming love. It's not the, the, love, the love of the lights that we spoke about, all these different levels of love. It's your natural love. And that's in the heart of every Jew. When you go on Mitzoyim and you meet somebody, you offer them Shabbos candles, the natural love flares up in their heart. Oh, you're such a sweet girl. It's so nice of you to do this. I can't tell you. They, 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 the love just, woo, flares up. You know, like, you ever see the boiler in your, in your house? You go down and check the boiler, and you open, and, and, and the boiler kicks on. Because the, the thermostat says it's getting a little cold in the house, the boiler kicks on. What happens? The fire goes, whoosh, the fire goes like that. That's what happens. The natural love flares up and prevails. It helps you to prevail over the cravings, the, the tigers, the lusts of the animal soul. And the result is that the animal soul never, never gains control over the city, which is your heart, so that you will carry out its suggestions action you won't do it that dim light that's left in the right side of your heart will help you but you won't do it heaven forbid you stop yourself and you won't say it and you won't listen to it and you won't think in it you won't continue thinking it you'll see something you're not supposed to see it wasn't your fault but you won't look twice you'll, you'll look down it's the summertime you know People take off their clothes, they walk naked in the street or semi-naked with a loincloth or something like they're kind of in the jungle. And sometimes you'll see somebody who is really, really nicely, you know, in great physical condition. He looks so <clears throat> nice. You don't know. I'm not supposed to be looking at I'm not, I'm not supposed to be, I'm not going to look at that. He's not Jewish, and I'm not going to marry him anyway. So it's not my word. I'm not, it has nothing to do with me. What am I teasing myself? That's that's the battleground of the vanity. You don't let yourself look twice or think twice something once you know it's not appropriate. And even in the mind alone, if you have a thought of doing something improper, the evil inclination but the left side of your heart has no power you don't let it work you don't let it remain dominant in your heart but it kicks back so it comes back so you fight again so it kicks back you fight again it kicks back you fight again. second by second but the author Rebbe tells you you're abandoning you're going to win you keep winning and winning and winning and winning. And you might even become a tzaddik, a tzaddikus. Some people think that you're all tzaddikus. I'm one of them. Now we're going to practice what we preach. Thank you, girls. Rabbi, I remember you said there's three things that drive the people, the person out of this world. You said that. You said jealousy, anger, and I don't remember the third one. L U S G. Lost. Lost. I didn't make it up. 
It's in here, the ethics of the fathers. Yes, but I always remember that. <laughs> the, the, the red light has to start blinking when you feel either of those, any of those things. Danger. Danger. You know, you're driving along, you see that red, the police put up a red sign, you know, danger, accident ahead, slip and go. No. Steep incline. Don't go too fast. These are the way dangerous signals. Okay. Have a good, have a wonderful day, guys. What do you call it?